Hello and welcome. This is Chris. I have another simulation for you. The Friday Night Light series is back. We've got the 2020 American Heritage Patriots featuring a number of big time players. A number of former NFL players have their sons playing in this game. And we're checking out the Palmetto Panthers. Tons of talent, tons of big time talent. I know you guys are excited about this. We're going to keep this thing going. Hopefully you like the uniforms. Hopefully you like this simulation. It's a huge help to show all of your support. And if I could, if I could get you guys to hit the like button, it would help out a ton. And also, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel to get plenty more videos and videos on the Miami Hurricanes and recruiting. So make sure you want to check that out. Okay, so here we go. We got Jacoby Spells back to return for American Heritage. Very interesting player, very interesting prospect. A guy that can play wide receiver and he's being looked at cornerback. He's going to be definitely one to watch for in this game and for the Patriots moving forward. So as you guys know, big news for Miami Hurricanes fans. The reason why you're probably tuned into this is because American Heritage five-star athlete safety James Williams verbally committed to Miami. So there's a lot of excitement out there for him. So you're going to check him out on defense. He wears number 20. And right now we've got the American Heritage offense on the field which also gives us a great look out of all the talented players on defense for Palmetto. Starting with five-star defensive tackle Leonard Taylor, he wears number 56, and five-star cornerback Jason Marshall, he wears number three. Also big-time players, check out Corey Collier playing safety number two. He can also play corner, which is why I think he's a very interesting prospect to pay close attention to. Speaking of guys to pay attention to, here's 2023 running back Mark Fletcher. Already has a lot of big time offers. Very interesting player. He's someone you're going to want to watch. He's got that good speed. He can get upfield. Makes big plays. Definitely one to watch in South Florida. There's no doubt about that. You look at American Heritage and they've had a, a really good program there over the last 10 years or so. And it feels like they've got a lot to work with this year. Williams was there as a sophomore. Transfers, transfers to Davey Western as a junior. Comes back to American Heritage for his senior year. But he's not the only one to be excited about. I mentioned former NFL players. Their sons are playing in this game. And they're all names you guys know. Ronde Gadsden, the second wide receiver. He's number 10. You guys remember Ronde playing for the Dolphins. There he is right there, number 10. Nice looking wide receiver, six foot four. Also on the squad, Brian Blades, the second son of former Hurricane Brian Blades. There's a nice catch by Gadsden right there. Tackle by Marshall, number three. So, man, there are so many big names in this game. Five stars, Miami commits. Young, talented players. Very curious to see how this works out, how this game goes. We will get to the other, the other players for American Heritage in a second here. We're taking a look at Palmetto, number 56, Leonard Taylor. You know, I think one thing that people are always curious about when they hear high rankings, is that player worthy of that? Are there flaws in his game? Maybe he's a little overranked, because overrated, because you hear him about him so much. And at the high school level, and we've seen it for years, not everybody pans out for whatever reason. Sometimes guys do get overrated for different reasons. And I'm bringing this up with Leonard Taylor because he's very highly regarded. But what I will say about him, Leonard Taylor, and I've, and I've covered him. I, I've been to his games. I've seen him at different high schools. I've talked to different coaches. He was at South Dade as a freshman, Southridge as a sophomore, makes the move to Palmetto as a junior, and he's still there as a senior. And the thing that stands out to me about Leonard, not just the things I see when I watch him play, but talking to the coaches. And there's no doubt that everybody 
thinks very highly of him and they've thought very highly of him at a very young age that he's going to be the real deal. If you guys haven't seen my article on InsideTheU.com, I caught up with Palmetto head coach Mike Manasco, and he said, he, simply put, Leonard's just a different kind of guy, and he's going to be playing on Sundays. He has that type of future. And even though guys are highly regarded at the high school level, sometimes it's hard to project how things are going for them in the NFL based on opportunities in college. And the progression of their career, it's a little harder to project three to four years later. But I, I, I definitely agree with him. I, I think there's so much to like with Leonard. The athleticism, the tenacity. He does things you don't see very often from a defensive tackle. I, I mentioned that in the sense of not just his pass rushing ability, his athleticism up the middle. He seems to always get a good jump, always in the backfield. But the ability to intercept passes, I think he had two last year. I was at a game where he had one, which was an impressive play. And I've seen another on film. So just a very good player, definitely worthy of his ranking is my point. But let's jump to the next guy. There's Brian Blades right there. But that was Burchard Smith on the catch, number one. Very good player, big time season as a junior, 13 touchdown catches. And I know he doesn't have the rating that maybe some of these other guys have, particularly in this game. The thing that stands out to me with Burchard, not only is he a very good in the return game, could be a kick returner, he could be used in the punt return game if you want to use him there as well, but his ability to provide mismatches out of the slot, regardless of who he faces, makes me think he's going to be a very nice piece in college. He's verbally committed to Miami. But you can move him around a little bit, and he's just a guy that you're going to be glad to have. So yes, maybe you're going to want a little bit more size on the perimeter at your wide receiver positions, but with Burchard, you definitely have a key piece for an offense moving forward. It allows your offense to be versatile, dynamic, with that kind of game breaker. And I want to talk a little bit about Palmetto right now. Just I'm, I'm looking at the names, looking at the starters, the rosters. So many big-time players. Palmetto's a school that if you guys have been following Dade County football for a long time, they don't have the history of the program. They've had some good teams, some good players here and there. You know, Jamal Berry popped up years ago. So guys will pop up. Chris Myers went there as well. But they've not had this kind of team where you really can put them in a state title consideration. And there's so much going on right now with whether there's, there's going to be a season and a lot of question marks with everything. And Palmetto's one of those teams that you can't help to feel for them in the sense that they've been building towards this season, 2020, with all of their seniors. Many of them have come up through the program. Guys like Burchard. They've got some a talented trio of running backs that are very fun to watch. You see 26 right there. That's Hannah. 17, Mike Jackson. You guys got to watch him in the return game. Had seven returns for touchdowns. So not only are they the big time names, but they have these other guys as well that make a lot of plays. So Kevin Smith, the quarterback, we'll talk about him. Man, there's so much to get to. First quarter already in the books. 0-0. Zero, zero. Drop in the comments your thoughts on these two teams, these players as well. Kevin Smith, the quarterback. Another guy I remember watching in practice while he was at Southridge as a reserve Talent is there, and then he comes to Palmetto and has a breakout year last year. And he's got a chance to be the best quarterback down here. Oh, there's Burchard. Oh, that's a huge catch right up the middle, right up the seam of the American Heritage defense. Not surprising to see Burchard make that play up the middle like that. But Smith has a chance to be one of the best quarterbacks down here. 
And I've talked to college coaches about him as well. And they agree. They think they really like his abilities. So look for his recruitment to pick up. Very good thrower. Put up very good numbers in, in the passing game. Touchdown passes. Passing yards. So here we go. Inside the 10 for Palmetto. Stays in the pocket. Over the middle. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Unable to get in, but they got second and goal here. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. It's a hand on the catch. I'm excited here. So we're finally in the red zone for these squads here. There's so much to get to with all the players, but let's talk about what's going on right now. So Palmetto comes out. They go a receiver on each side. They stack the line. Only one running back. Oh, that's a huge play. That's a huge tackle right there. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, and able to really. So here we go. Third and goal from the six. We got to figure they're going to go some sort of passing game, some sort of pass here. Looking at Burchard, Mike Jackson, Bobby Golden's another one. <laughs> and Smith just goes up the middle on the keeper. That's the other thing. Not only can he run, pass the ball, but he's got this ability to run. I would definitely say he feels more comfortable throwing the ball. You know, staying in the pocket, using his arm to make plays. But you see right here, and I think this is indicative of the type of player he is, where he can run a little bit. Well, oftentimes if you utilize a spy, You've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes... And just getting back to American Heritage defenses a little bit with the NFL away. guys. So Marvin Jones Jr., anyway. Earl Little Jr., or two other game. guys Point after up and good. And it's now a whose dad's played in the NFL. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And I think the one thing that stands out to me from seeing this over the years, certainly there's a lot of name recognition. And obviously... The kids have to pave their own way in terms of it's their careers now moving forward. But one thing that stands out to me is it seems common for these guys if they stick with it, work hard, that you know they do grow into being good players, even if it's not particularly in this moment. And obviously there's plenty of exceptions. It's just something to watch for. The kickoff unit is out they the seem to have the potential even beyond where they currently are if they're not considered if they're not highly regarded players so here we go here we go Mark Fletcher back here American Heritage is looking to answer so 350 left on the clock in the second quarter it's number seven Derek Edwards for Palmetto, very good player, very good defensive back. Makes big plays. Picked up a Miami offer. He's verbally committed to Louisville. Just a very good player as well. So here we go, American Heritage. With the ball, Fletcher. It's Fletcher. And from the 25, they worked this It's a solid game. He's not been able to break through that. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And but it's tough. You see 99 right there. That's Savion Collins for, for Palmetto. Defensive tackle. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Very promising player. Nice play. Ah, uh, it just didn't work out. That's Jason Marshall. Man, that's a huge play. Think about Jason. A lot of athleticism on the outside, about 6'2", 190, playing at that cornerback position. He's another guy that can be used in the return game. He flips over on offense every now and again. But certainly, if he can stay at cornerback, prove that he can handle that at his size at the next level, he's a guy that you project moving forward with his career. And he's a fun player to watch. One of the things I like about Marshall is a complete standout. 
when he's on the field. So here we go, American Heritage on the move. Got the band cranked up, this is great. Nice big play here. Getting close to the 50. I'm looking forward to seeing if American Heritage can answer here. Nice tackle by Bell right there, number 32. So we're getting close here. Tons of action going on. It's seven nothing. I appreciate everybody for stopping by. I want to thank you for your support. Obviously, we've got to hit that like button. You guys smashed it on that Northwestern Miami Central game, and I know you can do the same here. Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up so to Blake be Murphy, incomplete. four for six here. Defensively, Charles, they can I think a touchdown to would be a big deal here. As far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound. Hopefully you guys Stay like these lanes, American Heritage uniforms. And communicating well, too. So after the incompletion on first, now second Had a lot of fun two. creating these uniforms for you guys. Hopefully everybody likes them. Murphy to throw again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. It's Vincent Davis. Uh, Vincent Davis, a third. Very interesting, very fun, dynamic offensive player. Can play running back, wide receiver. Just has that playmaking ability. Another one that you could throw to. Another weapon for the offense. Where is he lining up? You see him right here. Okay, okay, a little, little animosity here in this one. I think he got his feet in, though. The Steelers send out the so they got to punt it, though, so no, it didn't look like it, count, it counted. So... Yeah, and again with these uniforms, and I'm curious, maybe drop in the comments, what are the best high school football uniforms in South Florida? Who has them? There's so many unique uniforms. That I'm sure many of you have comments on it. Not necessarily who has the best team, just which uniforms are the best. I think American Heritage, I, I think they definitely, these black ones, I think they definitely are in the conversation as one of the best. Maybe you like them the best, but yeah, drop in the comments, let me know. Very curious what you guys have to say. There we go. I saw Silvera there, he's a nice player, nice safety. For the Patriots. Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defense. Yeah, that's a good tackle right there. So, although American Heritage hasn't scored, their defense is playing solid. Definitely curious about the second half. Curious to see if there's going to be adjustments made. Who's going to shine in the second half? I think you've seen a few good plays. Players stand out already in this one. I think James Williams is having a nice game. Richard Smith had that nice catch over the middle, getting involved with the offense, helping Palmetto move down the field. Kevin Smith has had a good game so far. Here we go. So we got two timeouts left for Palmetto. A minute left. They're going to need some big plays. Oh, nice play. Nice play. Pretty sure that was Hannah there. So the three running backs. You have Isaiah Mosley as well and Tyrone Maxwell. They like to rotate each guy in. Maxwell number six. Mosley 11. If they get in here. But yeah, that was Hannah. So Hannah's catching the ball out of the backfield. And the thing that stands out to me with Palmetto's wide receivers. On first and ten, Smith. With Burchard Smith. Wide open receiver oh, there we go. And he'll be brought down on that 
that's a face mask. Oh, they got a face mask. Oh, that's that's tough for American Heritage. Tamari Brown. So they'll take the yardage. I think there was a Burchard on the catch, the but they also have Bobby Golden, number four, Mike Jackson. And essentially, all three of those guys are speed guys around the five foot ten range. Next thing you know, they march off another. It gives Palmetto plenty of dynamic players in the offense, a lot of speed to move the ball down the field with big plays. And they've got a quarterback to get them the ball. And now it's first and ten. Wow, they're already down here. Okay, so here we go. Ball on the twenty-two. Fifty seconds left. From the gun, Smith. That's Luca Rodriguez. He's another wide receiver here. 10 for 10 for Kevin Smith. Wow. Impressive first half, no doubt. I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. There's two. That's, that's Earl Little Jr. right there, number two. Sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Can lock nine. So here we go, ball on the 10. Looking to get a touchdown. Two touchdown lead would be huge. Smith on first down. Ooh, just inside the 10. that's tough. Again, Hannah now is getting plenty of touches here. Number eight right there. That's Marvin Jones Jr. Talked about him earlier. So here we go. Ball in the eight, second and seven. To the air again, Smith. Oh, you got to get rid of it. This will be caught at oh, man. I think he could have scored. He might have had a bigger play if he could have got the ball out a little quicker, but I know he's looking in the, in the end zone there. Or 65, that's Daryl Doctor. He's definitely an offensive lineman to watch for in the future for Palmetto. All right, third and four. Here we go. Probably the final play. Unless they kick a field goal. Oh, the fake. Oh. What in the world? <laughs> I, I thought it was definitely a touchdown. Okay, all right. That's a tough one there. He's caught like every other ball since or before that. And Smith has completed every pass besides that one. Not sure what happened. I wonder if that one's going to come back to haunt the Panthers in the second half. Heritage has to feel like they caught a break there. Hold him to field goal. We'll go in halftime down 10 0, unless they can have a big play in the return game. They've got spells back there. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock. But even though they couldn't get the touchdown, Palmetto's definitely in control of this one. Put the field goal on the board. And I think one of the things that, as a Miami fan, if you guys are watching this, one reason why you guys might be excited is there's just so many guys that Miami has offered in this game. Number of guys that have either committed, maybe they're going to commit soon. Certainly a number of guys you'd like to see in Miami's recruiting class, whether it's 2021 or 2022. To this or even 2023 like Mark EA Fletcher so yeah American Heritage is struggling point, on offense Palmetto definitely has the same in the more half. yards and, and it's indicative of the 10-0 score so right back out to Brandon God. Burchard Smith making big plays definitely right, you know you coach, like I said you see that catch over the middle and that's exactly part of his game catches balls over the middle the yards after catch is big in his game And he's a guy that was essentially considered a, a running back early in his career. 
and he could definitely still take carries, has the build of a running back, but he's just so dynamic in the passing game, and that's where I think his best position is. His best way to impact an offense is with catching the ball. So here we go. We got Smith back to receive. Mike Jackson is back there too. So Smith gets it. I'm a little concerned here with American Heritage. Hopefully they can stop them, keep the game close. Definitely don't want to get the score out of hand in a game like this. I th I'm looking at these three guys right here. Williams, Jones Jr., and Belades. I think all three of them have the potential to make a big-time play here in the second half, as well as Earl Little Jr. at the other cornerback spot. They're definitely going to need to do something to get back in this game. Help out the offense a little bit. Okay, Smith. Smith the carry. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. On second down now, Hannah. Hannah takes the pitch, but that... That's a nice stop on defense there. That's James Williams, number 20, on that tackle there, as well as Kinlock Knight. With James, I think some people, obviously, that being one of the highest regarded players in the country at that 2021 class, plays safety. A lot of people view him as an athlete. Where will he play in college, I think, is a big question. And certainly Miami's recruiting him as a safety. And I expect it, that's where he'll be given his first opportunity. And basically at 6'4", 6'5", right around that 220-pound range. He definitely will have to, you know, be effective in the passing game as well as a run game. And I think the thing is that stands out is a guy like that when you are when you have that size. You know, will you stay at that size in your career? Typically players get bigger when they get to college, add a little bit more weight. But I think regardless of wherever, whatever position you want to put James, he'll be successful. I think he has the ability that you can move him around. I think it'd be best defensive coordinator to move him around, utilize his abilities, put him in positions to make plays, whether that's you know, 10, 15 yards off the line of scrimmage, whether that's right up at the line of scrimmage to stay in the box, help with the run game. I just think you can move him around a little bit. He's got that length, that athleticism to be able to defend the pass. And I think the one thing that also stands out to me, when you recruit a player like James Williams and you get a commitment from a player like that, particularly a, a very highly regarded local player, regardless of whether it's South Florida or across the country, when you get that big time local prospect to stay home, there's such an impact in the recruiting game in the sense that his peers, other players, so they go from 142 a lot of people the respect they those kind of players. They want to play with them. They're very curious to see where they're going to go. They have an influence. Back to throw, Smith. Over the so it's not surprising if other guys want to play with a guy that's highly regarded like that. Getting one player like that isn't just getting one in my mind. It, it not only helps with the current class, obviously, but you know, it definitely helps out with the school. If things go well, you're creating a stronger bond, a better pipeline from a school. Again, that's assuming everything goes well in a player's career. 
Five catches for Burchard Smith. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like Earl Little Jr. Jr. on the quicker than fast. A lot of on the tackle there. He's right speed. there. That's good to see. Catch a lot of footballs, as we just good defense there. out of him. Again, his father played at Miami. And Earl Little Jr. is looking at a number of big time nice programs. Five straight completions He's a 2022 20, prospect. So here we, you know what? Palmetto has really shown me something here. They'll fake it. Now Smith. Okay, now we got the rollout game working. Mike Jackson. Man. This passing game is on point today. And it's not necessarily that they're throwing the ball deep over the top of this defense. They're just getting guys moving in space. Kevin Smith showing that good accuracy. Finding his guys. There's Silvera in on that tackle. Whole squad in on that tackle. Remember when Carolina American did that Heritage Denver, defense is just trying to they the defensive end hold him here. He it's a 10-0. Wow, we're three. already, man, Maybe we are already late like in the third, third quarter. This is going fast. The try and run for it on first and goal. He pushes forward for Navy. Another smash by Williams. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it. Second goal from the six game. for Palmetto. So we got three wide Steve receivers. Of the running game. The One running back here. So we go handoff. Hannah's trying to make up for that play. Just the eight carries. Getting plenty of work in this one. But trying to make up for that play. Late in the second quarter there, unable to get in the end zone. Hard Rock Stadium is hosting this big time game. Great to see. We are in the fourth quarter. Shout out to everybody still following along. Still checking out these players. A lot of tired bodies on that field. So we got a bunch of receivers to the left. Jackson down as a lone receiver to the right oh there we go that's a nice play Bobby Golden Bobby Golden with the touchdown if you followed Palmetto football you are not surprised to see Golden in the end zone here making a catch in a big time game you know they, last year Brashard Smith had a big year and score a touchdown Kentron had that big year, and then Bobby Golden was right there as their number three receiver. Those other guys with Kentron and Burchard, I wouldn't say, just put up big numbers. I wouldn't even say, yeah, maybe they overshadowed him, but just Golden's such a nice player that you're looking for him to have even a bigger year this year. And the result in the end, the Titans touchdown. Definitely great to see. So, Palmetto is up 17 nothing. I did not see this coming. Maybe you guys did. Yeah, Blake Murphy looking to You guys still got 6 minutes left. It's got to get the squad going though. Palmetto's been good on both sides of the ball. Again, not surprising. You see Charlemagne right there. Number 9. Just have a lot of guys that can make plays. And again with Palmetto. How does the kick off this 2020 team is looking to win a state away. championship. So it's not surprising to see them have the lead here. Not surprising to see them playing well on both sides of the ball. So here we go. I'm looking for, for American Heritage to bounce back here. It's been a slow three quarters on offense. They have playmakers. Mention Rod's Ronde Gadsden Jr. Or I apologize. That's a Ronde Gadsden the second. Jacoby Spells. Mark Fletcher. I mean, they've got guys. Vincent Davis the third. Fletcher. Fletcher gets a few, gets a few yards there. 
They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up. Still under 100 yards for American Heritage. The defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. So we're sitting at five minutes left. I think they definitely need to go big on the passing game here. Oh, nice. That's exactly what I was talking about. Is that going to count? Oh, we got a face mask on top of that. It's a huge play there. Collier. Yeah, my bad. That's okay. We're going to have to regroup off that. And Collier is definitely a guy that I enjoy watching play as well. I think he's a guy that could play safety or corner at the next level. I think he's a guy that makes plays. He's physical in the against the run, makes tackles. He also has, has the ability to get his hands on the ball in the passing game. Ten, a big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. So nice. Okay, so American Heritage. All right, five minutes to go. Here's Murphy from the gun. He'll throw. A few passes going. Here, that's that spells there. He's the guy that played on offense, recruited on defense. Class of 2022. Still developing, but still a lot of talent there. That's number six. Oh, this is a nice play. Okay, Fletcher, there we go. Yeah, a little slow in the running game, but they're and slow in getting it going. So there we go. Get the eight-yard pickup there in the passing game. I think running backs, it's so important right now with the way college football utilizes their passing game. A running back to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield is so important. And Fletcher is the guy that can do that. Oh, big throw. Oh, my goodness. Marshall on a tackle and coverage there. That's Michael Watkins, the third. It's a nice catch. So there we go. You know, there's not much time left, but there's still enough time if American Heritage can put it together that they could pull this thing out. You go touchdown here, and then you're going to need some quick stops on defense. And you're looking at, even though you're down three scores, if you can quickly get touchdown, touchdown, and somehow get the ball back on a field goal, timeout's a bit huge. Fighting the clock, though. Gonna give this time to the tailback. Oh, so they go handoff. Okay, they got to go hurry up, though. Nice run by Fletcher up the middle. Not only can Fletcher catch the ball out of the backfield, but he's got the ability to go up the middle and to the outside with his speed, making him a very intriguing prospect. They got to score here. Five receivers. Everybody on the move. Okay, there we go. Aronde with the catch and the touchdown. The celebration spells. Everybody's happy. I'm glad for them that they did not get blanked. I know many of you are wondering, where was this earlier in the game? But it is what it is. Palmetto's defense was really tough. So we got three minutes left. People bring pressure at you. They mash a hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. I wonder if they're going to go oh, just standard kickoff. They're going to go onside here. They got the three timeouts. And we're playing with the two minute two minute warning. So. So we'll see. Certainly everything's got to happen fast at this point, though. And that's assuming their defense can get stops. Quick shout out to Miami Hurricanes with American Heritage Ties. Cornerbacks coach Mike Rump was the head coach at American Heritage. Defensive tackle Nesta Jade Silvera played there as well. Okay, there we go. Fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. 
So they go onside kick. Not surprised. They're fighting time here. They're definitely going to need to stop. 18 for 20. 194 and a touchdown. Those are big time numbers. Not surprised. This guy definitely steps up in big games. No doubt this is a huge one. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. If you guys are curious, these are two teams that don't normally face each other or wouldn't face each other based on classifications. So it's great to see them on the field. They'll run on first down. Hannah. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. I definitely think. Even though American Heritage is in a lower classification, they definitely could win this game if they played each other. It's not like a smaller school would be overwhelmed or anything. They've got plenty of talent, plenty of size. They certainly could win this game. Sometimes you don't see that with the smaller schools, but definitely American Heritage is not one of those typical smaller schools. It's Maxwell and down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. So here we go, two minutes, third and inches, Maxwell on that carry. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. You're definitely looking for a big play for American Heritage on defense. Somebody has to step up. So the Titans in possession. So they go shotgun here. I thought they definitely would just line up. Oh, they're throwing. Oh, Brashard with the drop. I don't know. Blaze was right there. I don't know if that would have even mattered if he caught it. Okay, it's so a long field goal attempt here. 32. Okay, this is a long field goal. Oh, my goodness. I think that's a 50 yarder. 49 to 50 yards, depending on where the spot was. It's it's big, but really, American Heritage. That just means they have to score two touchdowns. They needed two scores regardless. Two minutes left. The thing is, they've got to score quick. They've got to get big plays here. Keep all your timeouts. Then what you do is you could set it up for a final possession. If you could stop Palmetto on defense, get your three timeouts. Maybe get the ball back, but they definitely got to score quick here. A big return would be huge. Okay, gets out to almost the 30. I'm expecting all these guys. Gadsden, he's got to get in there. Spells, Watkins, Fletcher, even get him going a little bit here. Whether it's Davis, any of all these guys. Everybody's got to get out looking for big plays in the passing game. For American Heritage, you definitely would like, if you could score, I'm thinking if you could score in the first, I think 50 seconds. I'm looking at like, get down the field, score a touchdown within a minute. And then gives you another minute for the, Second drive. Okay, there we go. It's a nice big play. Got to do hurry up. Clock's not stopping. That's definitely tough. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. Got to get up there. Looking at the replay here. First down now, but that clock rolling. Murphy on first down. Oh, another big pass. You get it? No. That's tough. They got to get all of these catches here. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job. And Palmetto's defense, you know, with Marshall and Collier, you've got two guys that could really blanket the passing game. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. You know, it's hard enough if you have one of those guys, but two guys. Two above average players like that really makes it tough. Third and two. I don't like that American Heritage call that timeout. You just got to do hurry up. You got to get everybody to the line and go. You got to save those timeouts. Essentially now, by using one, you've got to get the onside kick if you score. Either way, certainly a challenge. It's not like it's an easy thing to accomplish here with what they're trying to do. Get out of bounds there. Ronde there. 
Okay, so Murphy's picking it up a little bit. 12 of 17. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six yard pickup on third down. They just needed to get it going a little sooner. And he had a lot of space there. This quarterback now 12 of 16 thus far. It's first and 10. Murphy now operating from the gun. Oh my goodness, that would have been huge. Looking over the middle. So at 107, I was thinking they got to be right around that minute mark in the touchdown. They're only at the 39. But really, again, they've got to get the onside kick, so it's going to be a shorter field anyway. So they still have some time to work with here, but definitely got to get a touchdown. Get out of bounds. Uh-oh, that's not good. I think he stayed in bounds. Yeah, the clock's just ticking down. This one's tough. And if you guys are still here, you guys are true fans, true supporters, I definitely appreciate appreciate it, all of it. The support is great. Over the middle, there we go. That's what they were looking for earlier. Fletcher with a nice catch. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts. And I know you'd like to see them keep their timeouts, but basically they've got to do whatever they've got to do to get it in here. So ball at the 15. 31 seconds to go. Game has turned into a game here. After Palmetto got that big lead. Get over the middle. You got to hurry it up. Get up to the line of scrimmage. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop. So they call the final timeout here. They want to set it up. 20 seconds left. Ball on the six yard line. And since we got a timeout, be sure to check out inside the U.com all your coverage of the Miami Hurricanes and recruiting. All of the latest updates. Definitely check it out. Okay, Murphy. Oh, he's in there. That's a Ronde again. Two touchdowns on the day. Two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Heritage was down 17-0. And now we're... You know, they've got a shot. I mean, it, it's definitely going to be a long shot. But he gets in the end zone. Good to see. Good for him. Guys can celebrate a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So 16 seconds left. So definitely you're looking at onside kick. And then you get, if you get it, you get a couple, maybe two pass plays. Maybe three if you're lucky to get in the end zone and pull off this shocker. Are they going to do it? That'd be crazy. If they can pull this off. Kick is good. You get a look at the scoreboard. Loving that advertisement. Great to see. I think you guys remember when Hard Rock Stadium implemented the new scoreboards. Four in each corner. With the renovations, I think it looks great. It looks great on the game as well. So definitely... So they've the got to, they've got to recover this. There's no doubt about it. Okay, so they get it clean. Palmetto recovers it clean. They're going to take a knee, and it's over. But this was one heck of a game. I'm glad American Heritage fought back. Made it interesting for sure. But honestly, hopefully it's been interesting all game long for you guys. Hey, it's great to see all these players making plays. It'd be great to see these two teams line up on the field. Just a great performance by Palmetto. Shout out to Palmetto for getting the win here. 
guys haven't checked it out, be sure to check out that Northwestern Miami Central game. So this crowd will not go home gotta happy. search for that. For our visitors. And you That's why you gotta subscribe. You gotta make sure you're you're locked in on all of these videos no coming here. Celebrations it's for everybody. Rarity. Kevin Smith had a huge day. Now because defense has put such an emphasis Murphy on takes that loss. To heart, but he definitely picked it up as well. Their time saying, Look, Young you know player to watch for in the future. It. Helmets, Ball here we go. So on that, a lot of, lot of stuff happened in the fourth quarter. Camp. Sure but definitely want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Once again, check out InsideTheU.com for all your coverage of the Miami Hurricanes and recruiting. And you can follow me on Twitter at InsideTheU. Thank you.